Hi, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I think we're set. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes of your very busy mornings for us to present here at Bold Friday. I know Marika and I just had a big cup of bold coffee, and so we're, <laughs> we're ready to go. Uh, uh, so, hi, my name is Dustin Hoganson. I'm Marika Bertram. Uh, we uh, both have worked on a, a tool called the Community Assessment Reporting Tool, or CART. Uh, CART is an online tool designed to help our constituents answer the question, how is HUD invested in my community? Um, this is an online website that folks can go to, type in the name of their community, whether it be a city, state, MSA, congressional district, uh, so on and so forth, and get relevant uh, investment information about their specific community without any skill set related to uh, GIS technologies, HUD programmatic systems, or just in general being knowledgeable about HUD programs. It's all in, in CART. Uh, with uh, relevant disclaimers and footnotes and so forth. Uh, when we first started designing CART, we scoped it out to be a six-month project. And as we uh, dug into it, it stretched into a two-and-a-half-year uh, project with many ups and downs. Um, and if I could go back to my younger self, just going into this project for the first time, not that I'm that much older now, but I'm definitely wiser than I was before. Um, I would tell myself to be patient. We work in a complex, large bureaucracy with many moving parts, uh, involving procurement, IT processes, budget cycles, so on and so forth, that need to be considered, need to be given specific energy to be able to take a project from idea to implementation to production. And so I'm going to turn it over to Marika, who's going to talk about the value of patience while I get this thing going here. Great. Thank you, Dustin. So this all started off as an idea. And I wanted to just take a back step and just talk about how did we actually get to the genesis of this idea and how did we actually bring it to fruition? So this was an idea. We actually, what we wanted to do was we wanted to basically automate and standardize the way that we do our HUD community investment profiles. We didn't yet have funding, we hadn't secured a procurement action, and we didn't even know where all the data sources were going to be. And that gets us to lesson number two. Always have confidence in yourself, confidence in your project, and understand that everything is a learning process. As Dustin mentioned, we didn't know about procurement, IT, or database management systems, but we figured that we could learn along the way and that we could surround ourselves with experts that would be able to answer the questions when we had them. Now let's take a step back into actually how we started this whole process. So we wanted to be able to standardize and automate a process that was very uh, time consuming for our folks in the field. Dustin and I work in the Office of Field Policy and Management here at HUD. And what those folks do in the field is actually they make community investment profiles for our uh, secretary, our deputy secretary, our congress folks and mayors, and be able to actually identify where HUD investments are in a given community. Now, to be able to pull this information prior to CART was actually very time intensive, it was laborious, and it was just very tedious work. Um, to be able to put those together, a, a staffer would actually have to work using their their programmatic contacts within all of HUD's program areas to actually pull together all this data from 15 different HUD administrative systems. And then they actually had to take that data and map it to the geographic region that they were looking at for that specific community. Um, something that should have just taken several hours was actually taking multiple business days. And what we wanted to do was to be able to streamline that process, automate it, and standardize it to such an extent that we could actually take something that was several business days down to mere seconds. And so that's what we wanted to do. So with that idea, we were able to put together a field working group, identify through best practices what that template should actually look like that would be automated. And then once we had that template, we went to our Office of Policy Development and Research and actually was able to secure funding. Once we had funding, we were off to the races. We were able to gather a team of folks that were from our 
our contractors, we had HUD GIS experts, we had an OCIO project manager, and we had points of contact in all of our different HUD program areas to identify where those data sources should be. We worked with this group to be able to put together requirements documents, identify where a central repository for that data should actually be located, identify how to geocode all of this information, and ensure that we had update cycles and frequencies that would actually allow this data to come and be in our CART application itself. Now, this process took a long time, as my colleague mentioned. It was two and a half years to completion, and we had a lot of ups and downs. One of the downs was actually that we ran out of money before we were actually able to finish this project. And so that brings us to lesson number three, which is always have an executive champion. So without an executive champion, we would never have been able to bring CART to fruition because our executive champion actually got us a meeting with the deputy secretary at HUD to be able to make the case for additional funding for the community assessment reporting tool. And so always know that you need an executive champion when you're taking on a project such as this. And so luckily with those funds, we were able to finish the project and we were actually able to launch the community assessment reporting tool in December of 2016. And it answers that question, how is HUD invested in my community across five different levels of geography? city, county, state, MSA, and congressional district. And now Dustin's going to show us a demonstration of CART Live. Yeah, so you can see here I'm in any modern browser. This is Chrome. However, it can work in anything, even on your smartphone if you want. Um, the URL is egis.hud.gov forward slash CART. I'm sure it's on a piece of paper somewhere. Uh, doesn't load, just know that you need that S on the HTTPS. So um, this brings you to this website. I'm going to go ahead and just make it full screen so that we have more space to work in, but this is just a, a website. First thing you see is a rather lengthy disclaimer. It basically says that the data that's in CART is based on extracts and so that you need to read the footnotes to know how recent that data is. Um, also, that for those communities that have 10 or fewer properties, 10 or fewer grants, 10 or fewer tenants that receive HUD program assistance, we can't show that information to, in order to mask their privacy. Um, and that if you have any questions about the data, you should reach out to your local field office. So just saved you five minutes reading that disclaimer. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on K. The tool points you to the top right-hand corner where you type in the name of your community. Um, this is kind of like an omni search. You can search uh, a city, county, state. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll just search the city of Baltimore, where I live. And it's going to query that location, and we're going to pick what, what the tool thinks I want. And so I can either choose, I typed in Baltimore, Maryland. I can choose the city, the county, the Baltimore city as a county the Baltimore MSA or the state of Maryland. I want Baltimore City. And in just a moment here, we'll be able to see HUD community investments um, across a variety of HUD programs. On the left-hand side is an aggregate map of the geography we just chose. On the right-hand side is an aggregate profile of that community in terms of how HUD is invested in that and, and what grants there are uh, currently invested in that community. Across the top, we can actually skip to various business line items. The first one is on CPD grants. Those are uh, grants such as the Community Development Block Grant, HOME, HOPWA, uh, DRGR, so on and so forth. Um, there is a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to go through all of it. But across the top, we, can, we have rental assistance. That's public housing, multifamily, um, things of that nature. Mortgage insurance, that's the FHA program um, and various insurance programs. Fair housing, those are our FIP and FAP grants. Housing counseling are the housing counseling grants. Uh, so on and so forth. Um, we actually don't have enough time to go through every one of these, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Marika, who can just very briefly talk about what's in the CPD tab that we're in right now. Right. So, Dustin, basically... What is in this CPD grant is that on the right-hand side, we've actually given you an aggregate of the, of the grants within that community. So within Baltimore City, there is only one specific grant for each of those different grant types. But if you had picked a larger geographic area, such as a, as a county or a state, it would, re it would aggregate all of those different grantees, as well as give you the aggregate of that specific grant information for both the current fiscal year and the prior fiscal year. 
We also show a map of the specific community you've selected, as well as items that are actually CDBG um, activities around economic development, housing, public improvement activities. And within the way that this is structured, each one of the hyperlinks on the right-hand side of the screen allows you to pull up details. So if you had more than one grant here, it would actually pull up the, a line item of every single one of those grants. So if you had, say, 10 grants in the aggregate, it would actually list out the in individual grants across all of these different, the community itself. And so that's the way it works across all of the tabs. You have the aggregate on the right, you have the map on the left, and once you click on the hyperlinks, you can get the details down to a grant level, a property level for our public housing, and the like. And then when you go, if you look in the very top right-hand corner of the screen, there's a little hamburger menu there, and that allows you to be able to actually export this data. So our staff folks are actually able to simply print a report and be able to bring it to their boss. So rather than that whole huge process that we had before, it's a simple type in the name, click, print, and, and you're done. Off to the races. So uh, in conclusion, uh, thank you again so much for giving us a few minutes to present CART. We're very excited about this tool. We feel like it uh, moves HUD's mission forward in very interesting and exciting ways. Um, the, uh, it, it is a tool designed to help answer the question, how is HUD invested in my community? And, uh, as you go back to your respective agencies and organizations, um, th this kind of information is invaluable to our stakeholders out in all of the communities across America. And the ability to take information that's in CART, stack it on top of other resources, uh, will show opportunities in the data and among the resources. And so as you go back uh, with an idea like this one or your own ideas, just remember to be patient, to have faith in yourself, and get that executive champion. So thank you very much. Thank you.